take you back uh, for our next hangout, which we're going to talk about the future of nonprofit, uh, excuse me, the, the future of philanthropy. Uh, we have a few folks with us. Let me start off by introducing who we have here. You're seeing Starsky Wilson uh, with the Deaconess Foundation here in St. Louis. Thank you for being here. Amanda Cook. That's uh, me. Uh, thank you, Starsky. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, Amanda does some writing, some, uh, some PR, but we, we have her here tonight because uh, we're getting the uh, scoop on a piece you just did for the Business Journal. Uh, you've, right. done, you've been doing some research and you just turned it in uh, recently, I believe. So that's, that, that, is, that is off your plate, so you're free to hang out all <laughs> night now. Um, and also with us uh, is Brian uh, Nibrugi with the Archdiocese, Archdiocese of St. Louis. Brian, thank Hello. you for bringing your perspective with, uh, here tonight. And coming to us once thank again you. from Washington, D.C., Christina Costa, the Center for American Progress, a uh, nonpartisan progressive think tank. Is that a, is that a succinct, fair way of uh, framing uh, CAP? That's what we call ourselves, yeah. Okay, very good. <laughs> hey, I have the internet. I looked it up. What do you want? Um, okay, so let's talk about this. We've, we, we just saw a tweet on the screen. We just we heard from our folks at the table earlier. We're, we're, we heard from our first uh, two guests. Things are changing. Uh, people are changing. The way they give, the way they, we, we heard the word agnostic uh, in terms of the organizations they may give to. Let me open up the screen, if you will, here. Um, how do you see the future of philanthropy? And I'll open that up to all of you. The, things are changing. What do you think? Well, I think in some ways things are changing. And I, I think it's the environment that we're in that's changing. But at the same time, I think people at their core, they're not changing. Still, they're going to want to give to the people they have the strongest relationship with. They're going to want to give to the people they see the most impact with. What's changing is how nonprofits are, are going to have to communicate that uh, to people and how the young people are going to be learning about that uh, charitable giving as well. We heard, we heard the, the, the word story. Tell me your story is what people were saying. Amanda, what, what did you find in, in the research you've been doing? One of the trends that I saw was that um, people are both giving in their community because they feel connected to their community, but they're also giving outside due to, you know, the younger generation's comfort with the Internet, as well as some of these big natural disasters that are happening. Um, people are responding and sending their money farther and farther away, or one of the things I heard. Yeah, I think one of the things you'll find, is, is, in as much as we talk about, uh, younger generations and giving is uh, the shift from what we could talk about as combined or federated campaigning that you see in the United Way or the combined federal campaign for government workers to crowdfunding. Um, so uh, young people, social entrepreneurs, uh, and socially aligned mission for profits, LC3s and the like, um, will actually crowdfund. So you'll see people going directly to the internet, uh, reaching out to people through uh, social media and allowing giving uh, through, fun through funding sources that are direct, um, that allow mass organizations, uh, uh, mass uh, uh, audiences to give to them directly, um, but don't have to go through intermediaries in the same way that much of our traditional philanthropy has gone. And there are some new funding tools as well, and yeah. I know that Christina can speak to this a little bit better than I can. Um, this is kind of her area of expertise, but I've heard of things called NAP tax credits, Neighborhood Assistance Program tax credits, and then um, social impact bonds, which is really where Christina's knowledgeable. Christina, I think you were just called out. Can you tell us about <laughs> so what is this social impact bond? It sounds impressive. Can you make sense of it for us? And, and, and it, this is an example of what you're talking about. How not just the givers are changing, but the vehicles are changing too, through which they may give. Right. I think that's that's certainly very true. And social impact bonds are an outcomes-based financing tool for social programs. Uh, what's important to know up front is that they aren't a bond in any sort of financial sense. <laughs> so just ignore the word entirely. It's a terrible name, but we respect <laughs> it. Now. Um, Who should the we basic call, anyone we can call about that? I'm happy to do that. <laughs> okay. um, the basic idea of a social impact fund is that a government agency are, or agencies defines a specific outcome they want achieved um, relative to a population and promises to, achieve, to pay an amount of money if and only if that outcome is achieved. Um, obviously, this kind of puts the nonprofit providers who would provide those social services uh, to achieve the outcome in a bind. They turn to investors 
to put up working capital to fund those interventions. Um, if they're successful, the government releases payment, the investors receive what we call a double bottom line return. They get a very modest financial return on their investment, but they also get a very positive social return, uh, which is something I think everyone is seeing is that more and more people are interested in achieving a measurable, realized social impact um, through their giving. Talking now, about, if oh, I'm sorry. sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. Sorry, if they don't achieve the outcome in the original model, um, the government doesn't release payment and the investors don't get repaid. Is outcomes, uh, Starsky, Brian, is this something you guys are seeing? We've, we've heard that at our table tonight. We've heard it on Twitter uh, and other interviews. Is, is outcomes something that people are wanting to see? They want, they want results, if you will? Absolutely. And outcome measurement is necessarily new. I mean, it's been part of the conversation uh, for the last at least 10 to 15 years. Um, but uh, the uh, uh, the narrow sources of funds or, or the uh, funds that have dried up, the fact that we see less funds available, uh, particularly on the public, um, in public funding, uh, causes us to uh, seek outcomes with a more dogged focus uh, more aggressively. So you see these new uh, methods and approaches. So, so while funders have been talking about outcomes for some time, uh, program evaluation and development for evaluation has been a part of the conversation and in industry for the last 10 to 15 years significantly, now you're finding that being directly tied to outcomes and even held out as a carrot um, to use uh, probably a, uh, one way of talking about social yeah. impact lines as well. Uh, Brian, let's talk about that double bottom line that Christina was talking about, not just the return, but also the, the, the fact that you know that you're, you're getting something out of it. Is, from your perspective, representing the Archdiocese of St. Louis, is there more to this than just dollars and cents in terms of what the, the benefits, if you will, of giving? Well, I, absolutely. You know, I, I think that people, when they're when they are giving, when they're making a gift, they want to see that there is going to be it's going to touch the lives of people that that need the help. First of all, they want to be able to um, see see young people, for instance, getting getting a benefit, getting an education, or learning about their about how those young people are going to give. But I also think that people. Uh, understand that the, the gifts that we have are gifts that are given to us and we have to use them for the greater good to help others yeah. to help our friends and family and, and people in need i'll cut you off